What is up YouTube? So in today's video, I am going to be going over what my current DeFi farming stack is, right? So if you guys have no clue what DeFi is or what farming is in the crypto space, I believe you should definitely pay 110% to it. It's basically a bunch of financial products that are being built on top of crypto. Uh, this didn't really exist till two years ago. And at the time it was, uh, I think, oh, in 2000, I think 17 was actually definitely not two years ago. 2017 was like when like all these ICOs came out and people were raising a bunch of money for like all these like financial products. Um, and no one had any clue if they were actually really going to come out. So fast forward to today, I and mean, two years ago, the first DeFi products started coming out and these financial protocols started coming out. And the best way to kind of think about it too is like these protocols kind of all built, can build on top of each other and they're always innovating different ways to kind of generate their user base money and generate actual revenue. And DeFi is like what gets me the most excited in the crypto space, right? Because for me, um, if you saw my last video about like what my current portfolio is and what coins I'm holding, one of my thesis and one of my goals is to build up my DeFi farming portfolio so I can generate more passive income, right? I like buying crypto that like I can put to work and this is what my stack is, right? So um, I kind of divided by like two things that I want to talk about in my current, I guess, DeFi farming stack. So it, some are going to be more passive ones, right? Um, and active ones, which means like I could do it daily, but I'm kind of lazy and I do it weekly. If you, if you withdraw and compound daily, you're going to get more money. But uh, I just do it weekly just to kind of save time. Uh, but I'll start with the passive ones, right? So Ohm, Time, Swid, Kilma, uh, Tomb, T-Share, and then my uh, Beefy Farms, right? So here is what it looks like. So Olympus is one of these projects. So I'm not going to dive too deep into these unless someone kind of requests a video or you guys let me know in the comments like which protocols you guys want me to do a deeper dive into. And for you guys... And when I do a deeper dive, I'll kind of like share, I guess, my thesis around why I invest into the protocols and, you know, why I think possibly it's a good bet, right? So Olympus was a token that came out in the middle of last year. I think I joined it after a month, but basically they're the first ones to do rebasing and compounding as such like a crazy APY. I don't know why it doesn't show it on um, here right now, but their APY, I think it's like six or 7,000% a year, which is pretty crazy, right? So obviously the price of the token goes up and down, but your token is constantly compounding. So uh, if the price is stable, then you know, you're know you gonna generate like 7,000 times more of your money, at, you know, 7,000% APY. Uh, which is pretty crazy. So a lot of these I didn't start with like a lot of money in it Like I threw in maybe less than for most of these uh, Less than ten thousand dollars in Olympus. I think I started with less than like three thousand dollars in and I just put it in there because When it comes to crypto or when it comes to any investments I personally if I have money in it, I'm gonna pay attention to it, right? So I kind of just put money in there because it forces me to pay attention to it It forces me to pay attention to my investments and Olympus is one that's been like a huge innovative one in a space and a lot of projects have Basically copied their model and have their own twists on it, right? And essentially that's what DeFi is like everyone's just like kind of copying each other but Try and add their own twists on it to make it a little bit better so Olympus is one of the coins that I put money in. Um, crazy thing about Olympus, you can see like the treasury value of it going up. They have over $700 million in it right now for their treasury. And they were the first protocol to like own their own liquidity, which is really crazy. So there's a lot of videos that you can kind of jump into on YouTube about liquidity. And But they, these guys were the first ones to like own it. Right, so that means like when you go on say like Uniswap, CCSwap, or any DEXs to like trade money, uh, because they own 99% <laughs> of the protocol, all the fees, so when you go on Uniswap or to trade anything, there's like a 0.3% transaction fee, right? And part of that goes to the protocol, so like Uniswap or whatever, and then the rest of that goes to whoever owns the liquidity. 
And in the past, most projects did not own their liquidity, which is kind of crazy to think about. It just makes sense to do so. And Olympus was the first one to prove that. So all these other projects right here, Wonderland, Kilma, are forks of Olympus, right? So forks are just like a copy of another DeFi project, but they have their own twist to it, right? So Olympus, their goal is to become the reserve asset of DeFi, uh, which I don't really think it's gonna do, but I'm still gonna play it to make money, right? Um, at the end of the day, like a lot of people say they're like in it for the tech, but like at, really at the end of the day, the main reason we're in it is to make money, right? So this is one of the coins I invested in because I think I can make money off it. All right, so it's loaded. So we're in basically looking at this one. It is a retarded number in terms of their APY, 66,000%, right? And a lot of these own forks and a lot of these DeFi protocols Sometimes these APIs are ridiculous and you should expect like the price of the actual token to go down along with it if the APIs are pretty crazy, right? But there's still ways to make money in it. And the interesting about Wonderland is like they're more of a venture capital firm. So Olympus is like trying to become a reserve currency. Wonderland took the same concept of rebasing but they're using their own treasury basically to what they want to do is like acquire products or like fund other projects right with their treasury and just recently so olympus has like been the number one in the space wonderland recently i think became higher in market cap than olympus and the main differences i guess between these two which i find interesting is, is olympus is like very dow heavy which means it's like run by a community of people right but Wonderland is ran by a founder and he pushes it, he makes the decisions. There's no voting pro main voting process on decisions being made on how the money in this project is invested. And I personally am fine with that, right? Because I, in my opinion, when it comes to like business, right? Having my own business, having a software company and my Amazon businesses, e-commerce businesses, I think it's better to just bet on the founders and bet on like the guy that's spearheading the project right because in my opinion say like you're following it's like with tesla there's elon musk and he's like the guy spearheading it making most of the decisions but when you look at say u.s government they're, they're, to for like a law to get passed there's so many little like steps that has to take place in order for something to get passed and even voted on right it just takes too much time and especially in DeFi, it's just like faster if um, you have a central guy that you can bet on and you know he's gonna make good decisions and their treasury balance actually just recently beat Olympus which is pretty crazy not recently but it's been higher and then the market cap of Wonderland uh, they're at 3 million what are they at 2 point oh, I thought the market cap was higher uh, it bounces back and forth but this project it's pretty interesting so I like the guy behind it um, Danny um, and he has a couple other products too. And it, once you like look into him, you follow him, I really highly recommend it. So I have money in here too. This is how, has been one of my best uh, bets. I've been in it since like the very first week that it was launched. So I have good confidence in it. And I think as of right now, it's like a good time to actually consider getting into it. If you think the fork, um, type forks are gonna bounce back because I think all the forks right now, if you look at their prices, uh, it's towards like a low right compared to like the all-time high. So yeah, I think this is like a good level of support um, If we're talking, you know, TA type stuff. I'm not a TA expert, but that's what I think But on all of these I just want to say like I am I'm up on these two because I was in it since the beginning, but I took profits from Wonderland and I put it in Swindow and Kilma just because a couple buddies were in it and I liked the stories behind it but I'm definitely like down bad on Swid and Kilma. And these are uh, these are the passive plays that I'm talking about. But the interesting about Swid is they took the concept of the own fork, but they merged it with like NFTs. And what Swid's main thing is like, they are trying to just build and get more Ethereum, right? So they are a bet on the Ethereum ecosystem. And if you think the price of Ethereum is gonna go up in the long run, all these guys do is they're trying to build a huge treasury of basically Ethereum, right? So as of right now, they have 13,913 Ethereum. Price of Ethereum is 3,800. So they have $52 million <laughs> in uh, Ethereum in their treasury. And what I like about them 
versus Olympus, uh, Wonderland just started doing this too, but they put their treasury to work, right? Their APY is pretty ridiculous too, 70,000. But they put their treasury assets to work, so they're putting it in different farms, similar to what I'm talking about, in order to increase their Ethereum holding, in order to increase their treasury assets at the end of the day. So Squid's cool, it's interesting, it's definitely down right now, so if you were thinking about getting in, it's actually at a very great price compared to uh, the price that I paid for it, where I bought it when like, so this one's at like 216,000 per token right now. So obviously most people don't hold one token of this. There's a huge well. So like I bought in unfortunately around like when it was in the two millions and now it like dropped all the way down here. So I'm like down, down. But the interesting thing about like Ohm Forks it's like of course you want to get in at a good price but relatively speaking if the APYs stay at the rate that they are currently doing like 75 you're going to get more and more tokens right and theoretically over time it should kind of balance out of like the dramatic price decrease well for this one like i need the price to go up and for it to keep compounding so i'm just going to stay into this one until like i'm like positive on it in terms of dollars and then maybe reassess of like where i want to allocate my positions Kilmo is another one where i took profits from wonderland and i put it in this one so their whole theory their whole narrative right so everything in crypto is about narratives Kilmo is about reducing carbon emissions for companies by making it more expensive essentially for companies to buy carbon credits right so um, you can dive into deeper on this but basically companies right now if they're like emitting too much carbons they have to buy carbon credits from the market in order to i guess spit out more carbon and pollute the earth more so <laughs> what kilma is doing is they will buy the carbon credits right now they're uh, they're basically own fork that basically buys it all the time in the hopes of it's going to cost so much more for carbon credits that companies will stop polluting so it's kind of like a feel good type project that will pay you out too. And their APY is at 27,000, uh, which is pretty crazy, right? Um, but they had like a huge, huge uh, drop in price too, uh, which you guys could see too. But they had that narrative, so it'll be interesting to see like how this plays out. I would say Olympus, Wonderland, and Kuma were like the top three type of own forks in the space. And there's a bunch of forks now, right? But I would say Wonderland is my personal favorite in the space right now. Yeah, so I forgot where I bought it from. Yeah, so I forgot where I buy it from, but I bought it like somewhere here and it's been dipping, dipping, dipping. And it dipped a lot harder after the Bitcoin dump that we had in December. Um, so now it's at low prices, right? So in my opinion, anything with inside crypto, I generally like to buy when it's lower than average. Right, I've done that with a lot of like gaming tokens that like I bought and sold. So like looking at all these own forks, they're all at, they're basically all at like all time lows, in my opinion. So if you think there's gonna be another own fork type season and the narratives are gonna spin up again, might be worth considering. You know, um, putting a couple bucks in these. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. But I'm probably only gonna do it with Wonderland because that's like the project I like most. And then in terms of like the other two passive, or I guess the other three, right, that I kind of want to talk about too, or bring to your attention that I use is, one is Tomb Finance. So, oh, one of the things that I would also say that in the crypto space is that a lot of projects, in my opinion, have like horrible websites, right? The UI, the UX isn't the most friendly, in my opinion. Sometimes it looks like scammy, right? Like looking at this, like I was like, no way is this like, a legit project uh, but as i looked into it more i've been in this project for a while i was in this one when like it the price dipped because of the flood that was happening and i got back into this because henry uh a guy that's like a known billionaire like reinvested money back in this project and he's trying to prop it back up basic right and then it grew from like 80 million tvl right to now like 1.5 billion which is pretty crazy, right? That that much money is in there. But essentially the, the goal of this project is to make a stable coin peg to the price of Phantom, which is a coin that I'm really bullish on, which is interesting because most algorithmic 
coins that would like uh, that have been pegged to like an uh, say like a layer one or something have all failed in the past. The first one I ever heard about was Iron Finance, and that was the one Mark Cuban got like totally destroyed on. <laughs> and funny enough, because I saw him get destroyed in that, that's what drew me to DeFi and all these farming projects. Because I was like, okay, like why is he playing with all this, right? Why is this billionaire taking time and play with all these crypto projects? And that's kind of how I ended up diving down this rabbit hole. Uh, but essentially, you know, I'm in the Tomb and FTM spooky LPs, but I don't actually put it on Tomb. I put it on uh, Terrett and Beefy, uh, which we'll jump into, I guess now, right? So uh, Beefy is one of the more, I really like Beefy. Um, they're like a good play on basically the whole um, auto compounding space, right? So they have never been hacked. I really like their community on Discord. And when they're in their community on Discord, uh, you'll see that like they're smart people in there. The developers are smart. Um, they don't allow every single project to be on here um, unless it meets their criteria, right? So in terms of like T-Share, Tomb, uh, those are the LPs I'm in on here. Um, but I also have it on like Terra, right? But this one, like the nice thing about uh, Beefy is that you just put money in on here on the products that you like. You deposit it, and then it'll they basically auto compound for you and then these are like the different apys you can get off of it right so um i have a lot more that's on beefy but like i do a stack where it goes to my finance and i leverage it against it which is a more advanced thing which could be a, a good topic for another video of how i'm doing that which is pretty interesting in itself but yeah this is some of the vaults that like i'm currently in on the phantom network for them um and let's see so that basically goes over like more passive plays that i have and then more active ones right so the thing is like these are all like auto compounds where you can kind of set it and forget it and DeFi in general is kind of like that but for some of these other farms right so i am in beethoven for these so beethoven is basically a fork of balancer on the ethereum network which is kind of well known um and uh, you know uh, balancer has a good reputation on the ethereum space so what these guys did was they forked it and moved it to the phantom ecosystem right so you'll see this happen across like different layer ones and it's like honestly someone what well, if you're a developer and you know how to code stuff like if you just fork a bunch of projects to different like chains you can generate a lot of money just doing so so there is a huge gold rush right now i feel like that's happening in my opinion if you are like a developer and no solidarity and you're doing all that all right so on beethoven i'll show you guys what i have all right so everything finally loaded so i'm gonna you know, just cut that part out as usual so beethoven uh yeah balancer fork essentially what i have to do every single week so this is one of the more active farms right is so instead of putting my LPs of Beethoven to something like Beefy, I don't really want to collect and build my like beats position. So like I'll harvest it, right? So, you know, it'll give me $62 of this and then I can put it somewhere else, right? So I every single week I'll take that and I'll put it into like another token or into USD coins or whatever I want, right? and just reallocate like where I want my investments to come. But basically, I put $10,000 in and my AP, so my APR of this is about 145%. And you guys got to understand APR and APY is two different things. APY will always be higher because API APY stands for like daily compounding, right? So and this is APR. So it just spits out, I don't know, like 30, 60 bucks like a day. I harvest it and like once a week usually and then I put it into whatever farm I want. And then the different pools I'm in right now are these three, uh, right? And you can kind of see the balances that I have of this. Uh, this is just like, I think I had some like extra MIM coins and I just like, I was like, uh, I don't wanna really like buy any tokens right now. So I'll just park in here and get 33% on like my coins, right? Uh, which is really good for USD, right? So your bank is so gonna give you like 0.5, so to get 33% is really good um, until I figure out what I wanna do with this capital, right? So these are the farms I put in. Liquid Driver is a play that I'm in on the Phantom ecosystem because I think it has a huge uh, story similar to the C, the Curve and Convex. 
war thing that's going on on the Ethereum ecosystem. So this is the bet of that happening on the Phantom ecosystem, right? Um, and I think Phantom's going to do really well. So if you think a certain like layer one is going to do really well, such as say like Phantom, AVAX, Solana, Terra, or whatever, if you those are say like those run up by 25 percent the smaller market cap tokens are going to run up by like 50 or 100 percent or more just just because the market cap is smaller right and the people that are like looking at phantom they're gonna be like oh what else is in the phantom ecosystem that i can invest into um and then this one i have money locked in i have like 771 locked in i got lucky with this one and i put it in like back in november or so and it's really jumped up in price i definitely think it is overheated right now uh with all the phantom stuff that's going on so it is a little bit more of a risky play to go into um, as of today right but i do think that it would be interesting and this is a uh i guess these two are the only plays where i have my money locked into <laughs> into the year 2023 basically of these i haven't locked it in for two years at first it's just because i basically if you lock it in for two years you get the max like apy that it's going to spit out in terms of all these coins and what i like about it is like it pays me out all on tokens that i really like and i'm bullish on um so boo spirit and spell and that's kind of why i'm in it so liquid drive right now obviously look so <laughs> price today is at 2176 as you can see, the volume's really high, but I'm locked in, so I can't even sell for the next two years, right? So right now would not be the best time to buy my pin. Anytime something goes vertically up that fast um, and you see the volume go up that high, it's probably going to drop eventually soon into like a more stabilized uh, price point, right? So, but I got back in in like November or so, so I'm like five, so now it's at 21, so that was like a quick 4x which has been great and I told some people in about this in December and like now they're really happy that they're in it so you know it pays to be in these projects sometimes and in the discords right another project I'm in too is called Geist I just threw in a little bit in here so I maybe I think maybe a total of like 5,000 here so it, it's interesting how this works so I put money in the LP position all right and what it does is it spits out about $27 worth of Geist um, every day and I hit vest all right and when I vest it so th this is a f why is Jice interesting right Jice is a fork of Aave which is like really big on Ethereum but Aave doesn't reward its users and Jice does and this is a money market protocol so I hit vest and what happens is right and so I have like what 3,000 in the LP pool and then I have like another 2,000 in it so because I have 2,000 in it, it spits out $9.82 every day. So that's enough for like lunch or whatever. So that's cool with me. So I just put money in this because I want to pay attention to it. And a guy that I follow, uh, Noah, is also in this too. And in terms of the tokenomics for this one, it's a long-term play because the emission schedule is like pretty crazy. So it, I would, I expect the price of the actual token to like continually go down but eventually this is this is like a one to like three year play and i think the daily revenues and all this is going to shoot up more and more and more and more right so for me that's what it does um i know tokens that it pays out um are interesting so it'll pay out like all of these and usually once it gets to 100 i'll hit claim and then i'll reinvest all the jice ones and all of these i kind of just like leave it sitting there uh because it, it'll get more apy inside of like the markets or right here so if you put money in it'll get like different apy so obviously not all of them are like really really great but you also get jice tokens on top of that to kind of compensate for it but this is an experiment that i'm watching because it's an interesting model compared to just ave on ethereum that does not reward its users as and then terra lastly is another one that i'm also in it looks like i have a decent amount on it but it just the interesting about this one is the first time I've ever seen leverage LP farming. So what I mean by that is with all these other ones, right? So say on like beefy, like this LP right here, I put in 17,000, right? But here, what I can do is I put in 26,000, 
but I borrowed 16,000. Um, so my whole LP balance is 59,000, right? So I, I'm leveraging it. You can probably leverage it three to be safe, but I just do 2.2 because .2 I don't like to check this every day and make sure like I don't get liquidated. And this is definitely more advanced. I don't ever recommend anything with leverage to anyone that's new. But essentially if like this TWAP goes like out of range, I get liquidated and I lose part of my money and I have to pay a fee. But in return for taking this risk, right, instead of just farming with $26,000, I can farm with $60,000, right? So at the end of the day, I'm making 192% APR off of this. And the reason I chose FPM and TOOM is TOOM is relatively, ideally supposed to be pegged to the price of FTM. So that's why the TWAP is like really close and most likely it shouldn't get liquidated unless there's like a catastrophic event where the, like the market is dumping and there's a bear market then that's when you want to deal leverage these like really fast but the risk with this is if that's a, there's a bear market people are deal leveraging like you might not be able to de leverage your token so it's risky there and then same thing with ftm boo, boo. so boo is probably one of the biggest dexes on ftm and from what i've seen and i've been in tarot for like maybe six months now uh borrowing different positions these two move pretty closely together so i don't really have to worry about liquidation most of the time right um because usually if these like two so say like i borrowed thirteen thousand on phantom and 9.3 and so boo didn't go up as much as like phantom did so that's why the prices aren't even. So once a, these two go out of whack, that's when you get liquidated. But instead of just farming with 17,000, I'm farming with 40,000, right? And this is at 106 APR. And then I just threw, I also have some Ethereum here that I just threw that's getting 7% APR, which is not a lot. You can get more for Ethereum, but um, I kind of spread my Ethereum out in like different farms, or just so I can put it to work. And I have 9,000 of Ethereum like in here. So yeah. That's kind of the different farms I'm in in DeFi. These are different projects that I'm using to put my money to work, right? If you guys have any questions about this or certain projects you want me to dive in deeper on, let me know. I love talking about DeFi. I think it's really interesting and I think it's going to change lives possibly. So that's why I put my money in. That's you know why like I think this is going to turn my six-figure portfolio into a seven-figure portfolio. And yeah, so... At the end of the day, you know, let me know how I can help. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. See ya. Bye.